joined the Gideons in 2013. And I told God, I said, if you called me to be a Gideon speaker, because I'd heard Gideon speakers all my life, I said, I want you to give me my own testimonies I can share, not just repeating the ones that were given through someone else's experience. That later that year, I attended the state convention in Columbia, and at the convention, we were asked to take two scriptures to pray over them and to, for God to show us the person that would receive those testaments. After, after as we went for lunch, each man we prayed in that SUV that God would show us the person. Stepping out of our comfort zone. That's where I was at. As we entered the restaurant there in Lexington, one of the Gideons immediately went and shared the testaments with a couple that was sitting there on the bench waiting for their family to come out. I thought that was very bold. As we entered the restaurant, I immediately started looking over the patrons there, the worker staff, to see who I could give those testaments to. Not really sure. For, for an instant, my, I went and looked over the lunch buffet. There was a gentleman there that was replenishing the meats and vegetables. And immediately my eyes locked with his for a moment. Then I went, went on and sat down and ate. And as I went to, to leave, I clutched on those Bibles because they were still tucked away. And I said, God, show me the person. And immediately I knew that that gentleman behind the buffet was the one I was supposed to share it with. So I went up to him, looked back there, and he was still working. And uh, he said, he looked up, seen I was looking at him. He said, can I help you? I said, he walked over, I said, has anyone told you they love you today? He said, yeah. He said, my mother called me and told me that this morning. I said, well, I love you. Jesus loves you too. And I handed him that New Testament scripture. And I could see the emotion starting to come over his face. He said, today's my birthday. He said, last week when my mother called and asked me what I wanted for my birthday. He said, I told her, he said, all I want is a small pocket-sized Bible. He said, this morning when she called and wished me happy birthday, she said that she had looked all over Lexington and couldn't find one anywhere. He said, now here you give me exactly what I wanted for my birthday. Small pocket-sized Bible I can keep in my shirt and on my brakes. I can read more about Jesus. He said, thank you. He said, you have made my day. And that is the very first testament that I ever gave to an individual. God's timing is always perfect, and his hand is on every single copy of his word. And as I finished telling that testimony at my church, Sandy Level, in Blythewood, the choir director came up to me afterwards. He said, I've been here and getting testimonies for over 30 years. He said, I've never heard the one about my birthday. I said, because that's the testimony that God gave me. He said, wow. So I, said, I said, God, we serve a wow God. I realize that for many of you, when you hear the name Gideons, you think about this emblem in the hotel and motel Bibles. While certainly that's an important part of our ministry, we also distribute the small, pocket-sized New Testament scriptures to um, schools, hospitals, dentist office, nursing homes, those get the full-size Bibles. Um, but also we provide the small testaments to law enforcement, to fire, firemen, and those serving in our military. There's a church couple in Florida who was visiting a member of the congregation, an elderly couple, and they noticed that on their coffee table was a picture of a young soldier. And the couple said, you know, is that your son? Is that your grandson? And 
the older gentleman went to the back and he came back with a small pocket sized scripture that was worn and, and tattered. He said, That's my son. That's our son. He went into the military at a very young age, and we knew that he didn't know the Lord. And his mom and I, we prayed for him every night. It said that uh, months went by, and then we learned about that he had been killed in action. Several weeks later, we received his belongings from his commander. And inside his belongings was a small pocket-sized scriptures. And um, the note from the commander said that we found your son in a fighting position. With, and he was clutching this New Testament Bible. One finger was in the scriptures where John 3.16 is located. And the other finger was opened up to the back. And their son had signed his name to accept Jesus as their Savior, as his Savior, two days before that bullet found its mark. Amen. Bible's placed in nursing homes and hotel rooms. We check on those annually. Many times they're found written in. Uh, kids get them. Sometimes the pages are torn out. And we, we put a fresh Bible in there because that's, that's what we feel like that, that God wants us to do, have a fresh Bible in there that's not defaced. Uh, the ones that have the hard covers, those covers are removed, and a soft cover is installed on that, and then those are given to prisoners because they can't have anything with a hard cover. So I like to say that those, every Bible has an end of life. It's going to end up in someone's hands. Kyle had developed a desire to be rich, to be wealthy. And he put that above all things, even his family. And eventually he left his family. Um, one night his trucking business was in need of a driver. So with no one else available, Kyle said, I'll, I'll make the run. And uh, as he got to the Canada border, he was stopped and everything was checked. And uh, he had some outstanding warrants in California. So he was detained right there. Um, while in prison, he was escorted through the general population there at the, at the California State Penitentiary. Door closed behind him. He went over there to his bed, and um, there was a Bible there for him that had been placed. As he sat there that night, he opened that Bible because um, he had grown up in the church. He'd run from God also. Desperate need. He was in desperate need to have some way to, to ease his pain. And he felt ashamed. He was, he'd, he'd left his family and his job was in jeopardy. So he asked God, he said, God, let me know that a purpose for my life. Let me know that you're real. As the tears settled, God revealed himself to Kyle. He fell on his knees. Because he felt helpless. He didn't know what else to do. He's broken hearted, regretful. But for the first time in his life, Kyle felt a love come over him. He accepted Christ that night into his life. And as Kyle tells the story, he said the next morning as he was being shackled into that seat to be bussed to the, uh, to the next jail, um, he was singing, Jesus loves me. He said, you know, only God can do that. Only God can do that. The next morning, um, Kyle was, um, he was released, and he went back to his wife. And as he shared with his wife the joy and the peace that he had found, right then she prayed also to receive Christ. And him and his family, he, know, he knows that him and his family would not be the same except for God's word that was there. In, in the prison there where he was at. And today they're celebrating 23 years of marriage this summer. Now with over 300,000 members organized in more than in 200 countries around the world, last year 85 million copies of God's Word were placed or handed out in 99 languages. Also, 80% of these scriptures were handed out to students 
6,500 of those were handed out at the USC Columbia campus uh, last fall. But we're not just placing Bibles in hands. We're changing lives and uplifting the authority of Scripture. Terry's story begins at rock bottom. She had been through two marriages, had three kids, and couldn't hold a steady job. She sat there in her closet with a gun in her hand, and she cried out. She said, God, show me a sign that I'm not supposed to end it right here. The next moment, her son came running through the door. Mama, Mama, guess what I got today at school? She put down the gun, hit it, wiped the tears from her eyes, and went out. He was holding a New Testament scripture he had received from Gideon that day. He said, I have something to show you. And she showed it to her. And she sat down with him and began to read that scripture. And God spoke to her heart. That day began a new chapter in Terry's life. And she accepted Christ as her Savior. Amen. Right now, there are billions of lost people in the world, just like Terry, just like Kyle, that are in need of God's Word. Gideon's International is an extended missionary arm of this church, as we discussed in Sunday school, going out and sharing Christ. We seek to close this gap with you. You as our prayer partner. Last year alone in May, we gave out the two billion scripture of God's word in the, through the Gideons. Um, together we're placing more than two scriptures per heartbeat. Or more than one million copies every five days. But it's more than just a number, because behind every number is a face. And behind every face, there's a story. And behind every story, a priceless soul. On Good Friday of last year, Gideons, we were able to participate at the Christ Central Church in Columbia on North Main Street. Me and another gentleman were there. They were doing a, a foot washing. This lady who's a, who's a pedicurist, uh, she volunteers her services, and she was providing care to the homeless people's feet and different people that don't go to the doctor. And she was, she was called to do that and had, a whole, uh, had nurses there. They were giving them physical care, and each person received two pairs of new socks, a care bag, well, me and another gentleman were there, and we were given spiritual care. We were given each person a copy of God's Word, and we were also praying for them. Eighty-five copies of God's Word were handed out to those men and women that walked out of there that day. Five men accepted Christ that day. Yes, the impact of handing out these scriptures can be seen through the many testimonies I've shared with you today, and there are countless others. These are real stories of souls saved and lives changed through the placement of one copy of God's Word. We know that it's powerful. We know that it's sharper than any two-edged sword, and we know that it still pierces men and women's hearts today. Right now, there are millions of copies of God's Word being held back um, from being distributed uh, because they have to, we have to wait until the funds are there to pay for those. Countries such as Ethiopia, Nepal, Italy, Turkey, Sri Lanka, we need your help to reach these souls for Christ. First, beginning with prayer. Pray that we'll have a steady flow of funds from churches all over the world that support us. Second, pray that more men will join the Gideons who are called to help distribute God's word, professional men who uh, have time in their schedule that can help with these distributions, and also um, their wives who may be called also to join with them in this ministry. 
Third, pray that those who receive God's word will not only receive it, but they will open it and open their hearts to Christ. You've been given a bulletin that, sh- that tells more about the Gideons. Um, if you're not prepared, if, if you want to pray about giving a donation, you can send this in later. Um, but it talks about how you can provide scriptures to not only this country, but 199 other countries around the world. What other organization can you partner with that can do that? There are 178 of those countries that can't provide their own scriptures. You've heard the stories. People making only a dollar and twenty-five cents a day. That's what this cost. So now they have to choose between buying a Bible and food. So that's why we go and we give them these Bibles that they can distribute to their country. Also, the people in many of those countries don't have access to God's Word. Um, only through the Gideons in those countries and dis- can those people be reached and be given a copy of God's Word. But yes, your gift can make an eternal difference to one person in one of those countries. I recently gave a Gideon presentation in Myrtle Beach a couple of months ago. I often tell people, many times when I go into a church and speak, I'm the one that receives more blessing. And this is, this is true for me. And listen to this, because at the end of that service, there was a, a young African-American woman came up to me, and she said, in somewhat broken English, she said, I received a scripture when I was a young child in my village. I said, where was your village? She said, in Ghana. This young woman's testimony should encourage us all to know that these scriptures do find the person that God intends it for. And for me, that closed the loop because many times we may never meet the person that that Bible touched. But at that small church in Myrtle Beach, I got the privilege of meeting a young woman who that New Testament touched her life in Ghana. And uh, and we just praise the Lord for that. Now, wouldn't you have liked to have been the one who gave the donation, the person to Scripture that I gave that gentleman in the restaurant that day? You can. A dollar twenty-five cents purchases one of these scriptures, put into the hands of one gentleman, just like that person I met in the restaurant. Full Bibles are placed in hospitals, nursing homes. These cost five dollars, or a whole case is one hundred twenty-five dollars. Each one has the potential to reach thirty-nine hundred lives in that hotel room. That's its life expectancy. And then, of course, they're given to the prisoners. And someone re- uh, got one at Myrtle Beach, and, and, and they retrieved it. They replaced it. But in the back was written, thank God I made it through the night. And it was signed Agnes. You know, I don't know what Agnes was going through that night, whether it was an abusive husband she was running away from or a drug addiction. But what I know is that one person gave five dollars so that Bible could be there in a hotel room when she needed it that night. Also you can share the opportunity with family and friends, uh, the Gideon card display, you can make donations in a loved one's honor or for anniversary for their birthday, uh, not just one Sunday a year. Uh, you can place Bibles throughout the year. Also, Friends of the Gideons is a new program that we have. Um, You can go online and you can sign up to be a friend of the Gideon, a prayer partner. You can receive publications and stories all throughout the year, not just once a year. Um, I have a brochure I'll leave with the pastor for that. Um, And then again, the Gideon card program that you have. Um, 
Also, there's a new Bible app you can download for free. We're talking about ways you can, you can share through your cell phone. Um, there's a new Bible app in Gideon, and uh, it's, all, it's in different languages. If you, you know, if you want to share that with someone that lives on the other side of the world that speaks uh, French or, or German or something, um, you know, you, you can email that to friends, the, the download, how to download the Bible. It's an audio also, so you can play it um, going down the road. You know, fill, fill your um, ears with God's word and help retain those scriptures. Um, Life book. Life book is a new tool. It's the book of John that they're free also that you can purchase and your youth can hand these out at schools, at parades. Um, and again, these are um, funded by the Gideons ourselves that um, you can download you can get those free in closing I want you to ask yourself one question how will you serve God this year in Washington Street Baptist Church uh, is it sending out Bibles is it ministering um, to the, the ones in this community um, but this is our opportunity to step into the gap because people are searching for something People are searching. This is our opportunity to show them Jesus Christ is that something. And he's the one to be followed and not all of the worldliness that surrounds us today. If the Lord is leading you to provide a financial gift to the Gideons, thank you. I'm going to share this and I have to be very careful because this testimony comes from this church. I never want to embarrass anyone. But last year, as, as I was taking up an offering right there, I heard this click noise. It was an older lady. I didn't get her name, but she walked out that door. And I never look at what people give. But when I share this with other churches, I say, I want to tell you the biggest gift that was ever given. And it came from Washington Street Baptist Church in Winsboro, South Carolina. The biggest gift, and everybody's eyes get real big. I said, the lady was coming out. She was in her 80s. She said, she, she said I'm on a fixed income, and this is all I can afford to give. And she placed a dollar on that Bible. And right there, I closed that Bible, right there. And I hugged that woman's neck. I said, ma'am, this dollar means more to the Lord, and he can do more with this dollar than for someone else that give $100 that can afford to give more. And we sat there and we cried. She said, my husband was a Gideon for 30 years, and I knew right then that what she gave was from her heart. Don't think that a dollar can't make a difference in the life of one person. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. I know that not everyone's called to go into the mission field, but we're all called to help. Thank you very much.